We are over at the Printed Solid booth with my good buddy, Mr. David Randolph here talking all about filaments. If you guys don't know about Printed Solid's Jesse line, what is wrong? Links are in that description down below where, hey, when you're down there, subscribe and leave a like if you haven't done that already. Dave, talk to us about what's going on at Printed Solid. Well, we have been doing everything on the sun with filament lately. Yeah. And um, we've been running two lines at our main offices, and we literally just got delivery of our third line on Friday. So I get to have some fun and build out that. That's how I get to entertain it. For Earth here, we did a nice, huge sale. And, you know, we brought a small U-Haul full of filaments, and we sold through it all on the first day. So we went back last night, and it's not even noon yet, and we already sold out of all our filament again. Yep. So... You know, you got to have fun where you got to have fun. Hey. And the thing is, is that uh, the people that came to Earth this year, they actually got some of our Elixir test spools. Check these things out. Absolutely love the Elixir. You guys have been asking for it for so long. So have I. Because we miss Elixir. The shiny filament that doesn't suck. That's right. It's the best way that I've described it. Some of the most beautiful shine you've ever seen. Best silks out there. It's finally coming back. And we've been modifying it a little bit, so it's going to get a little bit more silky and a little bit stronger. Uh, Extra leather herbs and spices. Exactly. And we expect to have all the colors back by the end of the year. And uh, we'll see this kind of phased rollout. We'll add a few colors now and then as we can finalize the colors. Yeah. We have actually established the recipe to create the shine and kind of replicate what Elixir had before. I am so excited for this because. I've got a few rolls of the old elixir that I've just been saving on to because you never know, man. You never know. You got to save it. You never know when the 3D printing apocalypse is going to be over. We're going to get good silk again. So it I'm so excited. It belongs in a museum. It does. <laughs> Although those spools don't always last that long. Uh, anyways, <laughs> the colors here are always great. You guys know we love printed solid film. We just did a pretty big run for a client of ours. We did 30 pieces with about six kilos and it fit in a very large box. The pieces were pretty hollow. That was a fun job where it was all red ice and it printed beautifully, zero failures. That's what we love about printed solid filament. The elixir, I'm so excited for. I'm so excited and hey, stay tuned because we are gonna be going over to printed solid and we're gonna do an updated tour. Future Grant here, I got Victoria that awesome video where we tour printed solid is coming out on the 8th so stay tuned get subscribed so you don't miss it and uh i'm told we might be having a little bit of fun over there yeah i might have to be trying to train you for your next job yeah the content creation never really worked out did yeah, it? yeah, yeah no I it's not it, it's not working out I, I don't tell people to like and subscribe enough yeah I was gonna support say. us on you know all the, the the places to support people in the description if you, uh, if you if you don't want him to work for me, you need to hit the like and subscribe button below. Now it's gonna get no likes. He'll make me the social media manager, then you're really screwed. <laughs> I am really excited. Is this, oh, did, did I miss another elixir? I did. Yes, that is our bronze. A bronze elixir? I've been looking for a really nice bronze. This is- That's Dustin's favorite color so far. This is a nice one. How those prints are clean. What was this done on? Uh, Prusa. Yeah, it is. With 0.2 layer heights. Wait a minute. I sponsored but not sponsored because you know he's owned by Prusa. Shill. Shill. <laughs> Shill. Licks are coming soon guys. Stay tuned for that. We're going to be over at Printed Solid. Again, November 8th. November 8th. Make sure you get subscribed because um, there might be something special coming out for you. You heard it here first. Dave, thank you so much. Guys, check out Printed Solid in that description down below. Seriously, man, I appreciate it. See you real soon. We'll see you guys at the next booth. I'm here with some friend Dave. We're here at Earth. I wish we were here. We're having such a good time. We're meeting so many people. I hope you're having a great time. We'll see you real soon. Okay, bye-bye. Oh. That's perfect. Edit right. that. <laughs> Day two of the East Coast Rep Rap Festival continues with my buddy Mickey from Prusa. Hello. We are at the Perusia booth talking all about the awesome things here, including the Mark IV, the XL. We got a single tool head here. We got a five tool head over there. There's a lot of stuff going on. Mikolas, talk to me about Perusia. What's going on in Perusia land? Everything is going on. It's it, it's going. We have like, it's probably the last thing you want to talk about, but we have like collabs with big brands happening on Printables. It's awesome. We have Joe here. Up, Hello. Joe here. 
Wild Wild Joe appears. Wild Joe appeared. We have a single two XL. This one is not input shaping yet, but it will be input shaping really soon. I've seen them go. It's kind of wild. Yeah. We have a five tool XL where we might just like eventually like move there. Do we go there now? No, no, no. Well, we'll stay here. Yeah. We'll okay. get the roll of it. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. It's That's smart. movie magic. You've been doing this for a while, I guess. You know what to do. It. So talk to me about that five tool head XL. It's the tool changer. What I like love about it is that the tool changing mechanism is fully mechanic. Like it's using the core XY mechanics. Yeah. So there's no like extra motor or electromagnet, which makes the X carriage like extremely lightweight. Right. And the tool changing is really fast, which I don't know. I just think it's really neat. So you can get up to five colors. And now we're discovering all the cool uses for the tool changer. I've seen a model which had PCCF, you know, handle, but yep. the actual handle was rugged yep. with flexible filament. Or like the foaming one, and I think that's that's amazing. That's where I'm at with this. Like, I like the idea of multicolor, but multi-material is yes. where it's at. And at the same time, different nozzle sizes, so you could do your perimeters in like a 0.4 or a 0.25, but your infill, do it at a 0.8 or a one millimeter nozzle. Get that infill over with and do it every 10 layers. That's where tool changers really win. You can have your soluble support with your regular material or dissimilar support material where yes. those single nozzle mixing style printers, like even an MMU, yeah, you have all that purge but and with I, this, there's just a little prime. Yeah, exactly. You avoid having like a big wipe tower yeah. where you have to evacuate all the melted polymer from the nozzle and you can mix completely different temperatures. The tool heads are supply, like surprisingly smart. When they park and they're, they know they're not gonna be used for a while, they will like decrease the temperature so you don't burn the filament in the nozzle because it would degrade. And then the tool head is like, oh, I'm gonna be printing in the next like five layers. Let's start heating up, it gets to temperature. Then it does just like a tiny extrusion to prime the nozzle and then it goes printing. That's the thing I'm always worried about, the smart tool heads, because I've often been called a stupid tool. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little worried that these tool heads might be smarter than me. They're probably smarter than me as well. well so look, they've got load cells to tell you when things are going wrong. The only load cell I have is tell me that my back hurts. <laughs> That's like another nice thing is that you don't have to calibrate, you know, five tools. They are going to be offset vertically, horizontally. Yep. But you just screw a little metal pink into the middle of the heat bed. Yep. The all, Each tool will touch it from all sides and it will like say, oh, I'm like, 0 0.05 millimeters up and left. And just auto-calibrate. And it will just auto-calibrate. It's, it's really nice. That's the great thing, right? A part of 3D printing, especially on the light prosumer industrial level, is you just need it to work. You don't care if it's slow. You don't care if it's fast. You don't care if it's expensive. It just needs to work. Because at the end of the day, time is money. And the amount of time that you're going to spend fixing the freaking printer is going to cost more than the freaking printer itself costs. All right, it's not the cheapest printer on the market, but you know what? If it carries the same reliability that Prusa has had for all these years, it's going to be a damn Man, fine workhorse. A lot of the things we developed for this then trickle down into our other printers. Yep. So the Mark IV, the first layer calibration that's fully automatic, like you get used to it so fast that I would scroll the wheel to do life edge and see. Yeah. And, and I was like, do I switch from a smooth sheet to a textured one for PETG? But I would have to recalibrate. I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do it. You know, you switch to a smooth sheet, texture sheet, satin sheet, even the, we have special sheet for nylon. And yep. you, just, you just put it on, you hit print. And I like, I walk away most of the time. I yeah. just walk by the, in the next 10 minutes, check on it. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's fine. Like, it's so nice. We just did a run of 30 pieces. It was about six kilos for a client. And we could have turned on all the Mark III's in our shop and had it done in 24 hours. But I said, timing wise, if I just run two, I'll have a few extra days. And I said, I'm going to account for a about a 2% failure rate just in case I bought enough for one extra. Zero failures, machines work nice. perfectly. In fact, I was able to really play with my settings because I got them doing it's the same G code over and over and over. So all we do is just keep turning up the speed. You're like, ah, it's starting to get more, a little, little rough. More. All right, we'll turn it down. And the Mark III's can still run pretty fast. I, I love them. I, I do want to do the upgrades, get them to like the 3.5 or maybe the 3.9. But now even the mini can go freaking fast. Man, we just did that. Um, fun fact about the mini, if you haven't updated your mini in a while, you can't go direct to the alpha firmware. And I'm told that's in the GitHub page, which I definitely read before <laughs> trying to install the alpha firmware. So it didn't go wrong at all? No, it didn't go wrong at all. It didn't take me an hour to figure it okay, out. Okay. No. But when we figured it out, it is running like a 
damn, that thing is fast. Yeah, it's it's like, great. I love my Mini. I got a little handle on it. Toss it in my car, take a place, set it on a table, click print, and it just works. Now it not only just works, but it works fast. Yeah, the, the board is the... It's not the same as on the Mark IV or the XL, but it's very similar. So it's the same. We were able to merge the code for the Mini, the XL, yeah. the Mark IV, and the AFS, the cell printer. Yeah. So the Mini has slightly less RAM. The firmware developers had to be a bit creative about where to save some space. But then we were able to pour the like year of work on the Mark IV firmware to the Mini. So it gets all the fine-tuned input shaper. That's I so think nice. even like the first alpha is fairly like it's pretty solid. It was pretty good. Yeah. So we're just gonna polish it a little bit yeah. and it's gonna be good to go. It's like that breathed new life into the mini. And all the owners just suddenly the mini is suddenly 2023 and we don't have to like release mini super extra smart AI V7. It's just still the mini mini plus. We did have like one refresh. Yep. And it's suddenly like up to the modern standard. So I think that's nice. That's the great thing about a company that's gonna support their printers for so long. So what I love about Prusa, you guys are still supporting it. Yeah, Amber, camera lady, has a MK2.5S that she loves. It runs, it works, it's perfect. It's a great machine and it is still getting updates to this day. That's what we love about this. If you get it, yeah, I'm a Prusa fanboy, I know. But it's because there are times where companies just give a damn. I firmly believe that Prusa has figured it out. Yeah, they're not $200. They're not $200 printers. But you know what? They're also not gonna break like a $200 printer will. You got 24 by 7, 360 days last year of customer support. That's via chat. It's a live human. It's that kind of stuff that makes it confident for me to say that even if I have an issue, I go into chat, I ask, and we're good. Nice. That's why we chose Prusa for our farm, because honestly, you just need stuff to work. Yeah, we're never going to beat, you know, some competition that you know, runs the race yeah. to the bottom. So that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to make like nice quality printers with good support. And we make the full stack, right? Like the firmware, yep. the polymers, you know, we make everything and just maintain the high quality. And yeah, that's what we do. Everything is in-house is what we like to see as well. That way the control is maintained, right? I hear, I, I hear you might be going to Prague. So if you make your way there, I would love to show you like the PCB line your mind will be completely blown. We can see it, but can they see it? They will be able to see They'll it. They'll be able to see it yeah. too? I hope All so. right. Yeah, guys, we are gonna be going to Prague before Smurf, so stay tuned. And if you aren't subscribed to our Patreon, YouTube, all the ways to support us, get onto the Discord, because we're gonna be doing a lot of raw content that you guys will not see on the YouTube channel, which is a lot less edits, where we have a lot more fun behind the camera, where we can't do all that stuff for YouTube. No, no one's going to watch it. Got to cut out some of the fun stuff to keep the story moving. <laughs> but hey, links are in that description down below. Mickey, thank you so much. It is awesome to see Prusa here. You guys have a great booth. It's nice to see you in person. It's been like, it's been a while. I it's, only see your face online, so it's It's nice. been a year. No, Rocky Mountain. Were you at Rocky Mountain? I was not at Rocky Mountain. So you I weren't? Didn't... Okay, so it has been a year. That sucks. We got we to gotta get together more often. Guys, stay tuned. We have a lot more coverage of the East Coast Rep Rep Festival coming right at you. Prusa in the description. We'll see you guys. Bye. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed those interviews and a massive thank you out to all of our channel supporters who made these videos possible. Remember, if you want to get your name listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher, you can join via links in that description. So, you know, you can support these awesome efforts where we take a look at companies like Prusa and Printed Solid. And of course, stay tuned because on the 8th, in just a week and a half or so, we are going to have the first of two big videos at Printed Solid, and you guys are definitely not going to want to miss that. Anyways, enjoy the rest of our coverage of the East Coast Rep Rep Festival slash 3D Printopia 2023 coming soon. But until then, stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. I'm, I'm staying on my mark. Do I need to get some tape out and mark you? Uh, it's fine. Come on. We haven't started yet. Shane just wants to be in the background. That's all Shane wants.